Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on our Kearney Tracker lead attachment. And uh, if you guys have been watching for a while, this has been an on again, off again project. I've been waiting to get uh, this casting back right here to be able to finish this thing up and hopefully get it where we can get it installed over on our milling machine and use it. Now, what is a lead attachment? This is an attachment that ties into the end of my milling machine table. Uh, you put a gear on the on the handle basically that, that is turning as you move the table across and through a train of gears, it actually creates the rotation of a shaft that will rotate a dividing head and allow you to cut a spiral gear. So this is an attachment specifically for cutting what we call leads, uh, which would be any type of a spiral type milling job. And uh, I've purchased this, uh, I picked this up, uh, this unit up a while back, it was missing some parts in it. We've been able to find most of the parts. The only thing I was not able to find or not able to make so far was this little bracket right here. And what this is, is there is a drive shaft. Uh, I've already made the shaft. This drive shaft, you, you can put a gear on one end and it attaches to a spline on the other end that goes to my dividing head, but it needs to go through a little bearing block and that's what this is. And I was able to find an original. Now, someone was kind enough, a viewer was kind enough to sketch it out and draw it up. From that, uh, we made patterns. Uh, I drew this up in Fusion 360, 3D modeled the part, uh, then I 3D printed a couple of patterns that I sent to my foundry friend, Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry. And from there, he was able to cast the part that I need uh, that goes in here. Now we've got to do some machining to this and that's going to be today's project is machining this out so that we can do it. Basically, this uh, casting is going to fit up into this hole in, inside uh, the lead attachment. It passes through the hole. There's going to be some notches in here that, um, that fit on these, uh, these, these studs and nuts right here. And there'll be a hole that's drilled through this. And inside that hole, we will be putting in a couple of bronze bushings that has a one inch internal diameter that this uh, shaft will then rotate inside. So I know what we got to do. Uh, let's go get her done. So we're going to head over to the lathe and I uh, get this done. But first, like I'm going to zoom you in here and kind of show you up close exactly what we got to do. So this is on the inside of the lead attachment case. And if you look, you see the three studs here, you can see where it's been milled out and a piece goes in there. That was missing on mine. And basically what we have is a shaft that comes through here. It mounts in there about like so. And on the spline, you can put some change gears in here. These all can fit different gears to give me different ratios of rotation. So basically all this casting does is support this shaft, fairly simple part. Now, we got the three holes and uh, the way that those were originally, instead of being actual holes, they're slots. So, so there's gonna be a slot in each one of these. It was actually made where you could adjust it up and down a little bit uh, to get alignment just right. You could loosen those up and fine tune things. This is the casting. Um, it will fit up this end down here. Needs Basically what I gotta do is I have to turn this end on the lathe and it will be machined flat. And then also this uh, shoulder will be machined so that it fits inside of this uh, hole. And then uh, we'll drill a hole all the way through that again uh, that bronze bushings will be pressed into. And uh, from there, that'll be, um, uh, that the shaft will rotate inside those, uh, those bronze bushings. So with that, I think you kind of see what we got to do. I've got some, a sketch over here with dimensions and so forth that I need. And we're going to go over to the lathe, set this part up to uh, turn it. I'm over at my Monarch 16 inch lathe and this is what we're going to do to turn this. Now I've got my rough casting and um, you notice there's taper on that. That was so that would draw from the mold, but uh, I think we can chuck up on that piece there. Basically what I want to do is I want to get it where I'm up into the chuck and we got the shoulder here that just is fairly true and, and representative. I want that to be kind of up against my chuck. So I'm just going to put this in here and I'm going to put it in there till it's touching out on the, on the back side there. And we're just going to tighten this up. Now it's really just gripping up at the top because again, we have draft on our casting, but I think this is going to hold just fine for what we're doing, particularly with that shoulder on there, the cutting forces will be pushing into the lathe, So it really can't move it in there any farther. 
I'm gonna crank this down as tight as I can go and let's see what we look like. All right, so while I got a little bit of run out on this front edge, we're gonna be turning that side down. So that's gonna go away. I'm looking into the jaw and the casting on the inside is running nice and true. And really because that's not gonna be turned down, I want that to be running true with this side. So when we turn this down, that run out's gonna disappear and basically the, the sides will match up pretty well. So we're gonna turn this uh, shoulder here or this uh, diameter here down to an inch and five eighths, which is what the original measured. And we're also gonna face the uh, back of this to where it's square to uh, what we've turned down here. These will be two machine surfaces. The other side of this, uh, other than machining it to length, uh, we really won't do any machining there. It's just gonna be left rough. That's the game plan. Let's uh, get in here and do it. Come in here, I'm gonna start by just kind of touching off right here. And uh, just dial in about 20 thou. I'm just gonna take some light passes until we get that to clean up. Because it's an interrupted cut, and because I may not have the most solid gripping on the other side, I'm gonna be a little, uh, not gonna get too aggressive on this part. And I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna kinda face this off coming out the other side as well. We're gonna have to take that back down to a certain length, we'll do that in a little bit farther on here, but I do want to go ahead and just kind of get it started facing that shoulder. see what we've got going on here. I've got that shoulder backside fairly cleaned up. I think I'm gonna have to take it in a little bit deeper to get to my depth, but we'll know that here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and get this turned down or at least get it cleaned up. Come in here now and just face this front. So the first thing I need to do, or what I'm going to do, is I want to measure this length, and we're about a one inch, 120 thou roughly. That needs to be an inch and a quarter uh, when it's 250 thousandths. So I've got about uh, 130 thousandths roughly I need to go in on that face. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's uh, come in here. I'm gonna touch off on that. I'm gonna just take a little, fuzz a little bit off of it. Just dialing this in by hand here. And now that I've got a good uh, reference there, I'm gonna measure that again. We're at one inch, 164 thousandths. So I'm gonna actually put that into my digital readout. I'm going to uh, put in 1.164. 
And now basically all I need to do is just dial into uh, one inch 250 thousandths just using my digital readout and we should be where we need to be. So. Um, See where we're at. So according to the digital readout, we're at 246. That's about right where we're at. And I'm just going to dial into that 250 thousandths now. Right there. And this should be, this should put us right on size. Right on the money. Okay, we're good. So now the next step is gonna to be to get this turned to the correct diameter. We want, um, what's that, one inch 625 thousandths. And we're almost there right now. So we're at one inch 650. I got about 25 to take off of there. So let me touch off on that. going to take about 10 thou off. Let me get a good clean measurement now that we've, they're there. And I've got 15 more thou to come off. I'm just going to dial that in. This uh, inside measurement is not a precision fit on anything. It's actually undersized for that bore. It's, it's designed so that it can float around in there. So uh, even if we're off by a couple of thousand, no big deal. And I am a little bit undercut back there in the back, but again, that's no big deal either. That should be right where we want to be. Actually, I got about five more thou I need to take off, so I'm going to go ahead and dial it in. Actually cleaned up pretty much back there in that back shoulder. One inch 625, right on the money. The chamfering tool, we're just gonna break that front edge. And I think we have our turning done here um, for that inside part. All right, I have taken this part out and I'm gonna put it back into the lathe. I'm gonna chuck it up on the other side now and we're gonna finish our operations from this side. I just like having that on a more solid um, engagement back here instead of having the taper. And I think what else I'm gonna do is, uh, even though the original, I think it was all rough casting on this side, I, I am gonna at least face the front of this because there is gonna be a bolt that goes in there and tightens up. And I think it'll be better if that's just parallel and uh, I may clean up just a little bit. I got a little bit of a, a little defect in the casting right there. I'm gonna probably just barely touch that little corner in there just to clean it up. We'll leave the rest of it rough. Um, really no big deal. The other thing I need to do is I need to get this to the right length, uh, which is three and a half inches, and we'll need to face the end off. From there, we're gonna drill a hole in there for our bronze bushings. So. Let's uh, go ahead and get this side straightened out real quick. Shouldn't be much work at all. I'll tell you what, I think I'm gonna do this bottom first because there's a little little defect in that edge in there, the, that uh, corner. I just want to get that out. There we go. 
face that off. All right, I can live with that. Let's uh, face the end off down here. So after facing that off, we got 50 thousandths more to get to three and a half inches. So uh, I'm just going to zero my digital readout right there, and we'll take 50 thou more, and we should be right where we need to be. Three and a half inches, maybe. Yep, three and a half inches right on the money right there. Okay, um, I am gonna go ahead and just put a quick chamfer on that front edge. There we go. And I think all that's left is to bore out that hole for the bronze bushings. So we're ready to start drilling this out. And start with uh, Putting a little center in there, a little dimple to get started that hole on. Start with a uh, 3 8 inch drill bit, and we're just going to drill all the way through the part. All right. All right, I slowed my RPMs down and we've got a three quarter inch drill that we're gonna go through this time. Drill bit slipping a little bit in there. bits, chips out. And there we go, we're all the way through. All right, we're up to inch and seven thirty seconds here with this drill bit. Ultimately, we're going to inch and a quarter, and we're going to bore it that last little bit. But this will get us real close. Here we go. We've got our hole drilled through here. Now what I need to do is go in here and bore it to final size. So um, what I want to do to start with is get a good measurement. And to get do that, I'm going to use one of these uh, bore micrometers. If you've never seen one of these, it's got three little pins around it. And whenever you pull that in, those pins move out. So you're measuring on three points. These are really accurate for inside bores. Uh, this particular one here measures between a range of, what is it? Uh, one inch or 1.2 inches and 1.4 inches. Our hole here needs to be an inch and a quarter, which is a 1.25. So I'm sitting here just starting out. And so we're at one inch, 224 thousandths right now. We need to go to 250. So I got 26 more thou that needs to come out of that hole. Now, I will comment that I did check my calibration. I went, I just recently got a really nice set of these ring gauges. These are all precision lapped uh, holes, and uh, this one is, happens to be a quarter, or inch and a quarter rather. So I actually, you know, went over there and, and calibrated, or checked the calibration of my ring gauge in this, uh, or, or this bore gauge in the ring gauge. So I know it's reading right on the money. So but we got 26 thou to come out of there. I've got a boring bar. 
set up here. And what we're going to do is just touch off. I'm just going to start by doing a real light pass, cleaning up the pass through there. We'll get another good measurement and then bore it to size. Let's uh, measure that and see where we're at. All right, so we're at about, I took about four thou out. It wasn't quite touching all the way around that first pass or two, but I got it where I got a good clean measurement now. So uh, I'm going to put this number in my digital readout and we should be good to go. So we're at one inch. 224, one inch point 224, enter. All right, let's, uh, let's take about another 10 thou out of that and make another pass. And we're at 225, uh, 35, 39, one inch, 239. This should be right on the money. I'm just going to do a, uh, we're about a thou undersize. I'm just going to run it down through there. I'm not going to move it at all. We're just going to let it make a uh, uh, pass. Just taking the flex out of the bar. And I can hear it cut, and that should probably take that last thou out. We'll be, be real, right on the money, hopefully. All right, that's it. I'm going to. Pull that back pressure off, bring it out. We should be right where we need to be. All right, let's see what we got here. So, yeah, it's, we might be a half a thou oversize, depending on where we're at. But again, we got plenty of, yeah, about a half a thou oversize. Again, that bushing that we're gonna press in there is about a, uh, a thou and a half larger. So we still got a thousandths press fit, which is plenty. I think we're fine. All right, I think we got our uh, lathe work done. So I do need to get my bushings ready and I need two one inch bushings. I got a two inch bushing here. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. Uh, it's gonna be a little less than an inch, but it's gonna be, it'd be fine. I've just got my a tape in there or rule. I line my parting tool halfway in there. It's going to be roughly just cutting it in half. And we're just going to use a parting tool to cut this. I've uh, just got a piece there to catch that as it falls off. And it's not running perfectly true, but it's not going to matter for what we're doing. So let's see if we can press these bearings in I'm over here at the Arbor Press and hopefully these will just go right in. They should. Yeah. You see it kind of scraped some crud off the outside but that did go right in no problem. And we'll press one in the other side. Same thing here. Let's see if we can get that going straight. Yeah. There we go. So 
so here we go. Our uh, shaft will go in like this right here. And it's going to be just right. All right, so um, let's see what's next. Next step here is I need to cut the slots that these will fit up on the screws. There's three of them, and uh, we're not gonna drill holes, we're gonna drill slots again so we can get a little bit of movement. The studs are half inch diameter. I'm gonna use a 9 16 inch drill bit, or end mill rather, and again, that just gives me a little bit of wiggle room that we can find and adjust this exactly where we wanna sit. Now, to do this on the miller machine, I need to set this thing up. I've got just a parallel I'm gonna put down in the bottom of my vise. There's a gap down there, and I'm gonna drop a, um, angle block in here and then I can actually clamp down on that round part and that should keep this piece square. The other thing I need is I need a little bit of clearance up underneath the bottom for my end mill to clear so I'm going to use again two more parallels and I'm just going to put these up underneath this temporarily right now. That just raises it up same amount on both sides and I'll take my vise and I will clamp everything down nice and tight. Pull these out and uh, I've got clearance up underneath the bottom for my end mill so I'm not running into the, the jaws or the, the angle block or what have you. And uh, everything is lined up. Uh, actually, that bottom's not really square to the work. So let me loosen that back up and adjust that. I'm just eyeballing this to get it, this bottom parallel to the jaw. It's not super critical, but we want it to be as close as we can get. All right, so now we should be ready. Uh, these two are three inches apart, center on center. And of course, this one is on the center of the part. So what I want to do is I'm just going to line this thing up and again, we got wiggle room in here. We're doing these oversized. I'm just eyeballing this. Uh, I'm not going to try to get it perfect per se, but uh, we're going to get it close enough. All right, I think we're ready to go here. I'm just going to start by milling straight back on this thing and we're going to take it back about as far as we can go. Just uh, nice and slow and easy. All right, that's about as far as we can go. Come back out of that slot. All right, I'm around to the other side. I zeroed my digital readout uh, when I did this one in the center. And again, these are three inches apart on the bottom, so I just dialed it into an inch and a half half of that and we should be right on the money there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. And I, I scribed a uh, line, you probably can't see it, you can kind of maybe see that one there, but I scribed a line as to how far back I need to go on either side. So I'm just uh, kind of going by eyeball here. Come out of that hole. picking that up. Let me uh, stop. I may have to grab a different cutter. I can see it's kind of tilting my part and I'm not cutting straight. It's about to cut that whole ear off the back. If it does, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, we can still have plenty of clamping material uh, around it there. Let me get this reset up. Well guys, I went ahead and just did finish it up off camera. These two turned out great. But uh, <laughs> Bozo came to town on that one, and um, 
it was a situation where the, the sad thing is, is that y'all are going to be looking at it in the camera from a different angle than I was. And you're going to be saying, oh, stop, stop, you're messing up. But because of the angle I was looking at it from, uh, I, I couldn't see really the back side of this thing until I had then gotten myself into a mess. Uh, at the end of the day, guys, I'm not happy with how it turned out, but it's going to work. And I think in this particular case, working is more important than being beautiful. The nice thing is, is it'll be covered up. No one will see it except uh, all the millions of people who watch my YouTube video. Uh, but at least in operation, it should work fine. If I was doing this job for someone else, I would probably call up Clark, tell him to cast me a new part and start over. Uh, but for myself, it's a fully functional part. While it may not look pretty, it's going to work. And uh, we're gonna, we're just gonna go with it. Let me show you how this fits. So we got our three slots, we got our three holes. Everything comes in here all nice, and we have a little bit of wiggle room, just like we're supposed to. And again, the nice thing is, is when we put the put the nuts on this thing, it covers it up where you can't see it. So the only people that will know it are the ones who actually work on this part. Yeah, guys, I'm not happy with myself, but I'm not perfect. Yep, just like everybody else on the planet, I am not perfect. All right, there it is installed. We'll put our shaft in here. That's going to line up just perfect. I have two gears that will go right here, two gears that connect to this. This shaft will turn. This is just a, a spinning shaft, uh, but you basically have two sets of change gears there to get your speed uh, where you want it. Of course, this one will uh, adjust in and out and move in and out so you can get the gear spacings uh, just right to get everything to mesh. But uh, I think that's gonna work out fine. I think our uh, bearing holder or our shaft holder here with the bearings is going to be just fine. On the back side here, I would just comment that I need to make a little uh, collar that goes up on this with a set screw and it'll just capture in there uh, and that will be a, where you can take it off is how you get it off. I'm going to make that off camera. It's just a real simple lathe job. I'm basically running out of time to get this video put out, uh, but I think we got the majority of what we need to actually get done, done here. Uh, but we have made our missing part. Well, there we go, guys. Not perfect, but close enough to perfect that it's going to work just fine. And I'm happy to have that finally knocked out. Uh, again, another project that just took longer than I had anticipated. And a lot of it was just uh, in how long it took to get the casting back from the foundry and uh, not throwing stones at Clark over there at all. He had some technical difficulties uh, that has slowed him down with furnaces and what have you, but uh, I'm glad to have this checked off the list. And hopefully soon I am going to get this thing mounted up over there on the horizontal milling machine and start playing around and seeing if we can start cutting some spiral gears. I'll probably start out by uh, making a mock-up out of probably some plastic or something uh, before I make the gear for real, get all the kinks worked out, and uh, then we're going to make that spiral gear that we need to actually run the, uh, the vertical head on the horizontal milling machine. So actually machining a part for the milling machine so that I can use another accessory. But uh, there you go, having fun out in the shop. Guys, that will be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up or appreciate it, as are those comments. And uh, hit that bell icon so you get notifications. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.